stil aan. So, hello, I'm Alex, and I'm going to be talking to you about a passion project of mine. Um, Stilo was one of the names that I kind of liked and was available on PyPy, so I nabbed it. That's, that's the entirety of that choice. Um, but before I get into that, a little bit about me. Uh, until June, July this time, uh, this year even, I was a mathematics student uh, here in Cardiff, uh, recently graduated and trying to figure out what to do with my life. So, um, if there's three things I love though, is maths, programming and animation. And so what I hope to be able to show you tonight is sort of something that blends them all together for me and I find very exciting. So, I was in year two my degree and I was sat in a multivariate cal calculus lecture and rather than paying attention to what the lecturer was saying um, I got seized by an idea and started playing with it in my head so without going too much into the maths because I don't want to give a calculus lecture at uh, seven o'clock on a Tuesday um, we, we were basically writing down definitions for shapes. Um, we were, you could effectively calculate areas of these shapes as long as you had a nice way of writing them down mathematically. And so that basically boils down to a couple of yes, no questions about a collection of points. Um, and I'm probably gonna have to leave it at that until we get into it a bit more. Um, so, just before I get into all the nitty gritty, um, just here's a couple of examples of stuff that I've made with this so far. Okay. So. Um, to start off with, uh, is since I'm dealing with you know, images and animations, it would be good to have some way of dealing with images. So, first typo of the evening. There we are. A lovely picture but I can start messing with this. So I can perhaps take out all the red values or I don't know, for whatever reason, max out all the blue ones. And so within a few lines, create my own filters perhaps. Um, but I'm not to, I mean, there's a few other gimmicky things I can show you, like I can um, invert the colors in this image just by saying, give me negative image. Uh, but I'm more interested in what goes in those pictures. Okay, so this is where I have this concept called a drawable. And that basically means something that I can give to an image and say, draw this for me. So there we have a checkerboard pattern. So what's going on here? Um, Cartesian is just basically the posh math math mathematician's term for coordinates. You have a point that you label zero, zero, and you move along in the X direction, or you move along in the Y direction. Um, now, so on this image here, 
zero, zero is this point in the middle. And all the way across here is negative one. All the way across here is one, one, and a negative one. And all I'm saying is that I want to color in the squares black if the numbers associated with the point here, the x coordinate and the y coordinate, is positive. So when they're both positive or both negative, this answer is yes, and so we color the pixel. Um, but Alex, you have Pac Man. I want to see Pac Man. <laughs> so, let's do something a bit uh, more interesting. circle. Brilliant. Pac-Man's Pac mouth like, opens a bit, you know, you want to not colour in where his mouth is, otherwise you'll never know if it's open or not. So, I want some way of saying, ignore the, this sort of area here. And so, there's a different way of selecting specific points in a picture. We could say, there's zero, zero, and we can move up and across. Or we can use what's called polar coordinates and just say, I want to move out a certain distance and around a certain distance. And using the combination of those two movements, you can get to any point in this picture. And so, I can tell it to exclude certain angles. I can tell it to exclude certain angles from here. And then by changing this value here, we can get him to open his mouth wider or not as much. And so then by changing that value for every single frame, we get Pac-Man animating his mouth open. But Alex, Pac-Man's yellow. <laughs> if we drew this on that black grid you just saw, you wouldn't see him at all. You, you know, Pac-Man is this bright yellow that we all know and love. And so, I can now set the color. Ta da! A yellow Pac Man. So, if I zoom out a second, this here, it sort of models all the core ideas of this Stilo package I've been working on. Up here, so a drawable is made up of three things. There's sort of the place where the whole thing takes place. And so every example I've shown you so far has been taken on a little square where the corners are plus or minus negative one. You then have what I call a mask function, which for every point in the, pics in the image, it gets given a pair of numbers going, you're at this point now. Yes or no is this point inside Pac-Man. And so this function then returns a yes, no answer. So then the image knows whether it needs to color it or not. And so then once you've sort of masked off the area that you want to draw, the color function is then called at every point that you've selected. And it asks, what's the color? You know, is it blue? Is it red? Is it green? Is it pink? Is it purple? And then, um, once you've defined all that, you can simply pass it to an image 
And the image then knows how to take that and draw it. And there's nothing special about the dimensions of the image. It works just as well at twice the resolution, albeit a little bit longer. So what you draw is sort of completely independent of where you draw it. Um, I mean, we could do a few other things. If we go back to the checker example, leave it at that for now. this, can't switch back and forth nice and easy. So before we had just one black square here and here, but the pattern of a checkerboard doesn't change. You just want to make it, you just want to extend it. And so that's what the most beautifully named function in the world, extend periodically does. I need to come up with a better name for that. But it basically says, so before where we said, um, so that, so it's taking place on that one minus one square, we now say, no, it's here, it's taking place on that one minus one square. And then at like sort of the top level, we say, now we want the whole thing to take place between five and minus five. So we're now on a much bigger area. This, fun this function here then does the job of repeating the whole pattern. And so you can keep your definition exactly the same and have it then repeated across the image. Um, and if I'm honest, uh, there's not too much more to show without stop happening up here for like 15 minutes before I show you something else. <laughs> so, I don't know. What do you want to know? Did you just code that full pattern? Or? Um, yeah, Right, so there's a lot going on, but most of it is quite simple. So I think it's best if I also pull up the image so I can like flick back and forth. Here's the little dots that Pac-Man eats, okay? I call them just normal dots. And so that's the definition for it there. Basically, it's a circle where I just go, so you have the center point, 
and r is the distance from the center using that distance angle method of like addressing all the points that I mentioned before. And I just say anything that's less than 0.15 from the center. And then just color the whole thing yellow. So that was those yellow dots. Then you have the power dots. How are you getting the dots to repeat? I'll get there. Okay. <laughs> so then you have the power dots that makes Pac-Man go super and all the ghosts scared and run away. So that is just the same thing, basically, but with a bigger circle. So now I have a bunch of end things. And so, like that half a curve there, or the straight line, or that bigger curve there, an horizontal straight line, or a right angle corner, that's what all of these things are. End top, end bottom, so just like a half set semi moon. Um, and so I'm trying to build up basically a sprite sheet of all these bits of the, the map. What does line do? Line is a function here that just goes if x is between, you know those two values, yes, the point is in the line. A uh, similar end is just a circle of a set radius, and corner is another circle. And then all these end functions do sort of shift the circles to hide parts of them so that when you draw it, you only see like the semicircle from different angles. Um, all of them have a color, so everything looks like it's duplicated. Now, this is something I didn't introduce, but you have, so now I have a tile set. And I can't, and so I basically say, okay, so this thing called a normal dot, that's how you draw it. A power dot, that's how you draw it. And they were all defined up there. And so, I don't know, will this work? Okay, nothing looked like it blew up. Uh -huh. I went through a rename. Because it doesn't exist anymore. So now, if I, sorry, it's been a while since I've done this, so I have to figure out how I put it all together. There. <laughs> so that's the, that's the sprite sheet. So when you just draw them all one after another in their own little square, that's everything that made up the, the big black picture. And so then,
all this does is create a 25 by 25 grid. And then I just say, so along the border, along one edge from top to bottom, it's 11, which turns out to be the vertical straight line. Um, and then, so like say on the other side then, all the way along the bottom, is the horizontal line across the bottom, so across the top. So 11 points at one of these tiles. So if we go up, there we are, number 11 is the bottom edge. And so then, all I do is say in this grid which of those sprites essentially to draw. And so then by giving it to a tiled image that knows what's to do with the tiled set, and the gods, you know, look down upon us favourably. This <laughs> might work. It takes its time to think about it. <coughs> and there it is. Very, very small. <laughs> Anything else people would like to know? Um, basically, all that code, shove it in a for loop, hit go. Changing some numbers along the way. So once you draw one image, drawing a sequence of images, while computationally expensive, is quite easy. You just switch some numbers for a variable, shove it all in a loop, and just hit go. To be honest, I, at this point, I've been more interested in how do I talk about what's on that picture? Once I sort of come up with a nice way of, you know, that's not very succinct, you know, it's quite succinctly writing down, this is what I want my image to look, at, look like, go draw that. Once I'm sort of happy with how I want to interact with it, I can then sort of go behind the scenes and write what, what crops up very often, how do I optimize that? And so sort of ironing out kinks as they turn up rather than, you know, getting a super fast ultra algorithm that does one thing and then like six months down the line to find out, oh, well, I never use that anyway. I guess one thing would be like if it recognizes step one of your checkers or whatever it's called, is a sequence of lines that are next to each other to just keep it out of one line. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know with the periodic stuff that you down on the checkboard? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you do a periodic, uh, when you extend the periodic view, do you do that just the once? So do you check just the once and then extend the result? No. Or do you have a bigger amount of pixels? Well, if you, so the, the pixels in this checker image and the pixels in the, just where it was the four squares, are the same. Are the, same. the image is the same size. What changed was the pattern. Yeah. Um, so, but obviously you could because you're extending your I, I could. check a lesser amount of pixels, right? Yeah. So at the moment, so just a quick show of hands. Who's familiar with what decorators are? Okay. So when you add some function name above a, a function definition, that is a decorator. So behind the scenes, if I take out Uh, okay, so here I create a normal function, decorate and it takes some function f. You can now do work with this function. So at the moment, it's a pretty boring decorator. All it does is print the word pretty and give you the function straight back. And so now, behind the scenes, when you do this at symbol and define a function underneath, 
what Python does behind the scenes is say as is equal to uh, deck or rate of this add function. Okay, so whenever you sort of decorate a function, it sort of picks up that function, messes around with it, and then gives it back to you. So what that lets me do, if I take out this here, okay, what the Cartesian decorator does is pick up our checker function, which is sort of defined in mathematical space. It then chooses its default domain, because we didn't tell it anything, which is that plus one minus one square. And what it does then is when the image wants to draw something, it tells Cartesian, I am this many pixels. And so then Cartesian knows how to chop up those pixels so that they are spread from minus one to one evenly. And so then you get this sort of like perfect mathematical function. And then it's projected onto pixel space in your image. And so then you, you don't have to worry about what your image looks like. That the Cartesian decorator does that for you. All you have to worry about is, what do I want to draw? And so all that extend periodically um, function does is that when it picks up your function, it goes, ah, am I receiving a point that is outside your expected square? If so, I will shift it until it appears inside your square. And then everything carries on as normal. So you could probably do something more clever than that. I think that's my question. Was, are, you, are you essentially rescaling what that's doing? So it's getting these xy's and rescaling Yeah. Um, or perhaps what you could do is wrap inside your extent periodically function. You could use um, from functional to do capture. And then it would automatically know without having Yeah. I'd like to think of myself as a creative person, <laughs> but I can't draw. You know, a, a stick figure is about the limits of my drawing ability, and so very often I have ideas above my station. And so, this is an attempt to sort of leverage my sort of mathematical knowledge and my programming knowledge to sort of try and figure out to get the computer to figure out how to draw. And I just go, you know, draw that for me. But you know. Early days. But apart from the, you know, fun, uh, why Python? Because, for example, a lot of what you've done there is already implemented in other things, such as Pix, for example. Go read that. I've tried using Tix. I don't get on with it. I probably, you know, could persevere more and get really good at it. But well, so I. I yeah. Um, so I said I came up with, or I got hit by a wave of inspiration in year two. I've now done year two, three, four, and graduated, and I'm only at this stage. Um, during all that time, I, I tried, you know, using C. I used Haskell. I tried a bit of Idris, and I was just trying anything I could to like answer a yes or no question about, you know, a grid of values, you know, and I don't know, six months ago, I tried yet again in Python, and whatever I did different that time sort of stuck, and I was able to build on it, and so that's just where it is. Um, you know, the blue sky thinking is that this sort of becomes a general purpose toolkit for just like 
I want to draw an image and I want to put stuff in it. And so then you could create like layers on top of that that help you with your calculus homework and like help you visualize what's going on. Or there's a Pac-Man package. And so you have a bunch of you know, pre-configured characters and all you have to do is, you know, twist a couple of knobs on a, you know, on a, like almost on your your radio tuner, you know, just turn that dial and his mouth opens a bit more, turn it back and it, you know, closes and all that sort of thing. And just by playing with a handful of numbers, you could then, you know, create a Pac-Man animation because, you know, somebody went away and, you know, defined that. And just, yeah. Have you read the Battle Cross Separatist yet? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Well, I guess it's one of the difficult the question. So, if, you know, I'm very sorry if it wasn't the most engaging talk I've ever given, and <laughs> life happened and I wasn't really prepared for today. So, um, but if, you know, what you saw today piqued your interest, you can pip install it. There is some form of documentation, although there's still very much under construction and you know, there it is on GitHub if you fancy having a look. That's it. So, 